In today's episode, we're going to take a look at a new way to produce fusion energy. Then we have a video put out by the guys and gals over at NASA, some amazing views. After that, I have found a story on life that was not expected to be able to exist. This is pretty neat, and it changes what we think life can be. And we'll wrap all this up with a contest being headed up by NASA for your invention to end up on Venus. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and we're going to start off with just a quick update to a guy I've covered quite a bit on my channel, Mad Mike Hughes. Unfortunately, we lost a madman um, over the last weekend here on Saturday. He was doing a launch in his homemade rocket and crashed. Uh, he did not survive. Um, I know there's been a lot of, oh, blah, blah, he's a flat earther, this and that. I personally, I don't care what his misguided belief was on the shape of the earth. We all know it's round. Some people get tricked. We need people like him on this planet, though. People that are just crazy enough to build a rocket at home. Mike, you brought some flavor to this earth, and uh, you'll be missed. Um, let's get right into the actual news though. Let's get into some interesting stuff here. Researchers from New South Wales University have spun off a company that they are calling HB11. Yes, HB11 describes the hydrogen boron 11 fuel that they are using to make fusion reactions. This is their take on a, uh, a fusion reactor to generate electricity. They're going to generate power like the sun does. How cool is that? Now, unlike your standard traditional type of attempts, we haven't really done it yet, but the attempts to make fusion that puts out more power than it takes in, usually they're using strong magnetic fields, millions and millions of degrees of temperature, and they're just trying to force stuff together with 98 different lasers in order to spark fusion and hope that it works and then contain it all in electric field. Well, this is a totally different approach. Now, Professor Hora has been working on this technology for over 40 years, he says. But just recently, the chirped pulse amplification style laser has become available. In fact, it is so recent that its creators won the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics for their research into developing this kind of laser. Well, now that he has the right type of laser with the right type of strength, he is able to make his version of fusion happen. He does this by using two lasers, only two lasers. One creates a magnetic field around a fuel pellet of hydrogen and boron. And the second laser is zapped at it and creates what they're calling an avalanche reaction. Like it says in the news release from the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Hora's reactor design is deceptively simple, a largely empty metal sphere where a modestly sized HB11, that's hydrogen boron 11 fuel pellet is held in the center with apertures on different sides for the two lasers. One laser establishes a magnetic containment field for the plasma, and the second laser triggers the avalanche fusion chain reaction. And that avalanche chain reaction is showing amazing results. According to this team, they are seeing results billions of times better than the next best fusion reactor has ever seen. That is telling you something. Now, there's also other benefits to this system. They say that it is carbon neutral. The fuel is abundantly available and safe. The reaction, non-neutronic. So you're not making uh, radiation. No radioactive waste. Reactor can not melt down. And this is non-intermittent power. It, that gen basically means that the power can be delivered directly to the grid without storage means and whatnot. Another great thing about this is once it creates its fusion, the only byproduct is helium. And we're running out of helium. So that's a win-win. And as Professor Hora said, 
The clean and absolutely safe reactor can be placed within densely populated areas with no possibility of a catastrophic meltdown such as that which has been seen with nuclear fission reactors. Another beautiful thing about this type of reaction is it produces these alpha particles that can then be turned directly into electricity. Unlike either a fission reactor or what they're trying to do with some of these fusion reactors and you have to power a, a steam turbine or something that effect to generate electricity with it, this is able to be used directly as electricity. It, it sounds like magic, doesn't it? Well, it looks like it's a possibility. It looks like it's going to happen. And they don't want to commit to a timeline for this, which is understandable because like most fusion, I've been here my whole life, fusion energy is just around the corner. Well, you don't want to make promises you can't keep. So they're not putting a timeline on it, but they do believe that if and when fusion energy is created, this is going to be the way to do it. And for my money, it seems like a damn good way to do it. If you want to read more about this project, of, of course, everything is in the description down below. Go to their website. I'm going to link it. They have links to all sorts of papers and stuff that you can read and uh, really check this out. It, it's quite interesting. Up next, this one I'm not going to do too much with. NASA has released a recreation of what the astronauts on Apollo 13 saw when they slingshotted around the moon. I just thought this video was gorgeous. Now, of course, P Apollo 13 is the failed moon landing uh, mission where the astronauts ended up slingshotting around the moon in order to come back to Earth without landing on the moon. Um, they were lucky just to survive. The people over at NASA use the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter to put together a 4K video of what they would have seen while they orbited the dark side of the moon. It goes from, I guess you'd call it sunrise to earth rise. And it is just breathtaking. Link, of course, check it out. It's a short video, it's only like three minutes. Well worth watching though. This next one changes everything that I thought we knew about life. Researchers from Tel Aviv University have discovered a common salmon parasite does not need oxygen to live, period. Now, of course, there's different creatures out there, different animals, different things that can live in low oxygen environments, but they still need oxygen. Everything we thought was life needed oxygen in some form or another. They have found that the parasite, Henigoya salminicola, does not need oxygen at all all period it, it can't even process this is a parasite that belongs to the same phylum as coral jellyfish anemones but branched off millions of years ago when it found that living inside of a host fish can be fine these are a, an animal that can live in their host for the entire entirety of the animal's life entirety of the fish's life they're non-painful they don't hurt the animal but they live in cysts in the animal with zero oxygen in them. They even look alien, don't they? But this is the first macroscopic organism that has ever been seen to not need oxygen to live. Now, anyone who's had the basic high school science knows that cells need mitochondria in order to live. They're the powerhouse of the cell, you know? They, they produce ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Well, this parasite isn't just missing them. But the ability to produce mitochondria is missing from this parasite's DNA segment. So now, without the mitochondria though, how does this parasite produce this ATP? How does its cells get energy? Uh, there is a theory that maybe it sucks it, as a parasite will, from the host animal. I guess it's a possibility. Uh, they're going to they're have to take their time and test that theory. But for now, this does show that multicellular organisms can transfer from being aerobic to anaerobic. Not just anaerobic, completely anaerobic and not needing oxygen at all. In my opinion, this changes everything. Right now, when we're looking for life on other planets, one of the key things they look for is oxygen in the atmosphere. 
But if life can live without oxygen, who's to say aliens need it to live? Opens up a lot of possibilities. Well, thinking about alien life on other planets, NASA wants your help designing parts for their newest rover. This will be the rover that they send to Venus. There's a lot of challenges though when it comes to sending something to Venus. The uh, temperatures there, 840 degrees Fahrenheit with an atmospheric pressure 90 times that of Earth on their surface. It's hot and heavy there on Venus, so you got to watch out. And uh, that is why this new rover design is going to be clockwork. That's right. They do not believe circuitry, circuit boards, things to that effect will be able to survive under these conditions. So they are designing, one of their designs is this. That is a wind-powered clockwork rover. How cool is that? And that's what they have to do. Very few spacecraft have touched the surface of Venus. One of the best ones was sent by Russia, and it was only alive for a couple minutes and only able to send back these couple images. And that's why NASA wants their automaton rover for extreme environments Ari to be built clockwork and able to last on the surface for months. Months. Yeah, pretty amazing, right? In there, exploring hell, avoiding obstacles on a clockwork rover, they're looking for public submissions of a system that will run on clockwork to detect and avoid obstacles on the surface of Venus. And like Ryan Stewart said, he's the challenge coordinator. NASA recognizes that good ideas can come from anywhere and that prize competitions are a great way to engage the public's interest and ingenuity and make space exploration possible for everyone. There are three different levels of prizes, top prize being 15,000, second being 10, final prize is 5,000 for third place. And submissions are accepted up until the 29th of March, 2020. So I figure if you're watching my channel, you like what I do, you're probably a little bit like I am and you like to tinker. This is an opportunity to come up with something that could end up crawling around Venus one day. And how cool would that be? On that note, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to see if I can't come up with a submission for this contest. And uh, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click the thumbs up. If you didn't, click the thumbs down. Comments, questions, anything like that, leave them down below. And uh, share it with your friends. Help my channel grow. I'm trying to get videos out a bunch of times a week. We'll see what happens. But until next time, you know, just have fun and be safe.